Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we are testing out the Potenzic P5, the Dreamer Mini Drone. It is a 5G Wi-Fi FPV, remote tilt adjustable, 2.7K camera, GPS RC quadcopter ready to fly. So taking a closer look, it has the DJI Phantom styling with the landing legs and the hanging 120 degree field of view FPV camera. It is remote tilt adjustable from zero degrees straight down to 90 degrees. It is anti-jello mounted and can be removed with a counterclockwise twist. This camera will record 2976 by 1680 pixel photos and videos to the micro SD card and 1920 by 1080p photos and videos to the phone app. The phone app is called the Potensic Fly app, a free downloadable app in the app store. So go ahead and check it out. And here is the micro SD card slot for the built in DVR. Up to 128 gigabyte micro SD card is supported class 10 or higher is recommended now the motors are brushed motors and the propellers are geared there's status led lights on each of the motor pods and there's also propeller guard slots so here are the propeller guards or the prop guards simply push it in and it will click into place just like that to remove, simply pull it off from one side and then the other side. Just like that. Now I recommend using these if you are a beginner. It will help to protect the props and thus protect the motors. The battery bay is in the rear and the battery is a 7.4 volt 1000 milliamp size battery said to be good for about 20 minutes of flight time and they do provide you with two of these batteries so a 40 minute combined flight time can be had charge it up using the micro usb charge cable that is provided a red led light will indicate charging and a green led light will indicate a fully charged battery now i would recommend not using some other micro usb charge cable since it may overcharge the batteries so slide it in and it will click into place just like that now the quark up the weighs in at 237 grams with the battery so no registration and no remote id is required the remote controller has the flip out antennas but there are no actual antenna wires running up the antenna so they are just for looks it does have a flip out phone holder that is spring loaded to hold your phone the gimbals are nice and smooth a little bouncy and we have a speed changing rotary dial and the return to home button on the left shoulder and we have the camera tilt adjustment rotary dial and the gps on and off switch on the right shoulder now press both of the return to home and the gps button simultaneously for emergency stop we have the dedicated mode one and mode two switchable button here so if you flick it to the right it's mode one now most of us are mode two but hey if you are mode one then it is that easy the calibration button is right here short press for gyro calibration and long press to initiate the compass calibration we have the power sliding on and off switch right here the one key to take off and one key to land button with the long press right here and in the rear we have the photo video button short press for photo and long press for video and we have the headless mode button on the other side it will take three triple a size batteries all right here we go with the potenzic p5 the dreamer mini drone i got a fully charged battery inserted and i also have a 32 gigabyte micro sd card formatted and inserted and i cleaned the camera lens and it's facing zero degrees so we are ready to go so let's go ahead and power it up Press the power button on the battery and the quadcopter powers up. Let's see, we got some red LED lights in the front. 
we got some blue LED lights in the rear. They are blinking at the moment. So let's go ahead and power up. And automatic bind. You don't have to do the throttle up and down thing. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. Power up the iPad here and go into the settings. Go into the Wi-Fi section of your settings and connect with the Potensic DSDR05A blah 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 wi-fi network and i'm connected and here is the app it's called the potensic fly app free downloadable app in the app store so go ahead and check it out so let's get it started here we put it sideways and let's see screen record three two one boom screen is recording and there you go that's how it looks like hit start and we should get Wi-Fi FPV here. And it says remote control connected. Current remote control mode 1. Okay. I guess mode 2 is mode 1. Okay. Because it's throttle on the left side. I'm, I already checked. <laughs> Alright. So we are connected. So let's take a look here. Oh. There's a little freeze action. And there's the sun. The sun is looking pretty nice. Yeah, a little bit of latency, a lot, lot of latency actually, but slowly, these quadcopters slowly get better as it's warmed up. Now, the horizon is looking a little warped as well. There's another big freeze. Yeah, all kinds of freeze, but it says when flying outdoors, please use high gear. Okay, so there's two speed modes. So let's go ahead and take some photos. Let's take a photo with the app and I did hear a shutter so I think I've taken a photo there and here's the photo video button so short press and we have taken a photo so let's go ahead and make our rounds taking photos with the phone app first okay there's one there one here the camera looks really nice Okay, there we go. It caught up finally. And we have taken some photos there. Now, what I want to do is I want to lock the rotation of my iPad here so the screen doesn't flip over. All right, so here we go. We're going to take a video now. I'm going to go ahead and hit that video icon. And we are taking a video. Are we? There we go. Now we are taking a video. Okay, so let's go ahead and leave the iPad right here. And let it record. We shall be back. And let's go ahead and check out the uh, quadcopter. So we need to calibrate the compass and we need to calibrate the gyro. So this is the calibration button. So long press to calibrate the compass. So initiate the calibration. Long press it. Okay, so what you need to do is rotate it horizontally. At this time, the left rear blue LED light is blinking. The right one is not. So once you rotate it a few times, the right one will start blinking. So let's go ahead and rotate it. And looks like the right rear LED light is now blinking. And the left one is not. So with the nose down, rotate it until both of them starts to blink. Once, twice. Looks like it's about twice. So the left is blinking and also the right LED light is blinking. So we are done with the compass calibration. And you need to do this compass calibration every single time you fly. Or I recommend that you do. And short pressing it will calibrate the gyros now. So let's short press it. There you go. Different sequence of blinking and it has resumed. Okay, so let's see if we have acquired all of the necessary GPS. So arming the motors, both sticks to the bottom and in. To disarm the motors, the same thing. Let's see. Yeah. So when it arms, that means we have acquired the necessary GPS satellites for GPS position. So let's go and take a look at the phone app. 
and see how many satellites we have acquired. We have acquired 21 GPS satellites and we are in HD. So let's check out the setting here. So we got main controller setting. It has beginner mode turned off. If you have it turned on, it will only go 30 meters away. Altitude limitation, we have set it to 30. No, I want to go higher than 30. So let's see here. I want to go 100. What? Okay. Okay, let's go 100. All right. And distance limitation, it says 20 to 300 meters. So it's set to maximum 300 meters. So this quadcopter has 300 meters of distance or control distance. Circling flight setting, radius. 10 meters to 50 meters. Okay, let's increase that to about 25 meters. And the speed, 3 meters per second. I guess we'll just leave it at that. And circling direction, oh, going to the right first. Okay, so we are set there. Let's check out here. We can also adjust which mode you want here as well. Mode 1, mode 2. And it knows mode 1 as the left stick throttle. And the next is about, so that's that. So, okay. So we are good to go. All right. So let's go ahead and check this thing out. Arm the motors. And disarm the motors. But first, let's see. One kilo takeoff and land works by itself. Long press it. Yeah, it works by itself. And we got GPS position hold. So it is looking pretty nice. Nice and rock steady. Let's go ahead and yaw. And basically yaws in place as well. Right above the takeoff spot, which was the table. Okay. Let's see here. Okay, we got up to speed three. Okay, we are down to speed number one. So we're going to check it out here. And I put the prop guards on because I don't trust these quad couplers. They do flip over. Okay, it just kind of slowly goes back to where it was. Okay, so let's go ahead and check this thing out here. Full pitch, speed number one with the prop guards. Hey, nice and smooth. Hey, it's flying pretty good with the prop guards too. So if you want to fly it a little sportier, Take the prop guards off. I'm going to demonstrate it here today with the prop guards on. Because this is a dirt field and if I do flip it over, then dirt gets into those gears. And sometimes it causes problems and issues. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. Speed number one. And let's see the Wi-Fi FPV. It's supposed to have a 5G Wi-Fi FPV. So let's see how good it is. Here we go, forward pitch, slight delay. Mm, not the very best. Okay, I know I'm turning now and there I am, I overshot myself. So the Wi-Fi is not that great. Okay, coming towards me, but well, the video looks really nice. I'm impressed with the video. So hopefully we'll take some nice videos because it's recording to the micro SD card. Okay, there we go. So you can't really rely on this Wi-Fi FPV. Yeah, all kinds of delay. Ah, well that's not that good. It would have been better if they just left it at the 2.4 gigahertz, but it's got a pretty good camera, so you need the 5G Wi-Fi for the transfer. So that's kind of sad that it is doing that. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out speed number two. Okay. Full pitch. And full yaw. Speed number two. With the prop guards on, 
So it may be a little bit slower than without the prop guards, but not that much different. So there you go, a full pitch, and that's the full speed. Turning around, seems like it kind of slows down on me. So full pitch. Okay, that this time it's not doing the slowdown. Full pitch still yet. Slightly going to the left for some reason, and look, it kind of slowed down, and now it's pitching straight. And there's no breeze here today. And if I let go, comes to a halt. GPS position hold. Okay. Speed number three. Full pitch. Yeah, it's pretty good. A little bumpy on the turns. But look at that. It kind of veers to the left. You see that? That behavior? And now it's kind of redirected itself to the right side. There you go. It's kind of like rolling to the left slightly, but I have my pitch just straight. So let's see. Coming towards me. It kind of comes towards me. And that is the full pitch in speed number three. It isn't that bad. It's a pretty decent flying quadcopter here. Nice and smooth, nice and quiet, so you won't wake up the neighbors. Okay, so that's good. Now let's go and check out the Hellas Mo. Hellas Mo button is in the back here, so pressed it and the lights stopped blinking. Instead of blinking, it stopped. So pushing forward, turning, and it's still going forward, turning, and it's still going forward. It's facing me, but it's still going straight out because I'm pushing it out. So that's headless mode. If I pull it, it'll come towards me because that's how we calibrated it, facing that way. So even if I turn it with the yaw, it'll still come back to me no matter which way I face the quadcopter. It still comes back towards me. That is headless mode and it works really nice. So going to the left and going to the right while it's kind of diagonally facing me. So there you go. And when I let go of the sticks, uh-oh, it is doing a toilet bowl activity here. So that's not good. Let's see how long it takes for it to stop. Perhaps because it's in headless mode, it's a little confused. So let's get out of headless mode. And I see that the lights are blinking once more. And looks like the toilet bowl activity kind of slowed down. Let's see. Turn the GPS off. Or long press it. Okay. GPS is turned off. And I see that the lights have stopped blinking as well. So headless mode, the lights stop blinking, and GPS off, lights start stop blinking. Look, it's drifting because we don't have position hold. So let's go ahead and bring it back here and push it out and let go. And it just glides. There you go. So you want to fly it a little bit more sportier. This is the way to go without GPS position hold. So when you make the turns and whatnot, the GPS doesn't want to uh, lock position. And when you let go of the sticks, it continues to glide. All right. So that's GPS off. Now letting go of the sticks and turning GPS on. It comes to a position hold, but oh, it does the toilet bowl activity sort of. No, no, no. It went to the position where I clicked the GPS on. When the GPS came on, that was the position, and it drifted a little bit more and came back. Wow, so that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go ahead and give it a landing here above the landing pad. And I'm going to use the one key to land. Okay coming down and I'm going to slowly position it so it will land on the landing pad and it did stick that landing so it lands pretty good yeah not bad maybe I should take the prop guards off then 
Okay, so let's go ahead and take the prop guards off. One side first and then the other side. Just like that. Very simple. So if you are a beginner, yep. Leave the prop guards on. And I'm going to leave it right here. So now that'll be our new home point. So let's go ahead and take off. There you go. That is the height it comes to from the ground. Okay. Let's push it out right about there. And let's check out the return home. It's doing a slight toilet bowl activity. But it's starting to maintain a position and it has come to a stop. So that's pretty good. So here's the return home button on the left shoulder. So let's go ahead and press it. Okay. Rises up. Oh, double beeps. Continuous. Rises up. Designated height. Returns home. Backwards. A little off, circling. Okay, come to a halt, please. Yeah, that's not that good. Now, if you come, now if your quadcopter continues to do this, then you should land it and recalibrate the compass. And look at it; it's not stopping. It won't stop. The toilet bowl activity here so that's not that good it should come to a halt and start descending but it is doing something else and if you are low to the ground uh, this could like circle around and hit something structure tree so don't fly near structures or trees with this one or near people for that matter and it is not stopping here. So I'm going to have to turn this return home off. Okay, I turned it off. And look at that. Now it stopped. So that is not a good behavior. So it did not pass my return home button test. Okay, let's bring it down a little bit. So there we go once again. Return to home. Continuous double beeps. Okay. No, nope, it's doing that again. Look at that. Yeah, not a very good GPS clock up there, is it? But this time, look, it's coming down. It's, it's fighting all kinds of turbulence and it's coming down. It slowed down and it's slowly coming down. Ah, maybe I should have left the prop guards on. Hopefully, it sticks that landing. Oh, <laughs> it stuck that landing, but look at where it took off from. It took off from here and it landed over there. So, definitely, the GPS position is not that great on this one here. Yeah, uh, well, let's go ahead and continue checking it out. So it has exited once it landed, so that's good. Now I'm going to manually take off and throttle up to this uh, altitude right here. And let's go ahead and push it out a little bit further because ooh, it doesn't want to go that far. What's going on? Oh, there's a G-O fencing seems like. Yeah, 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 look at that. There's a geofencing. There you go. That means that we are in low voltage. Let's see what the voltage is. Oh, yeah, I do see the battery level indicator down to just one bar. One bar. And it says, flying low battery. Please fly carefully. Okay, so we do have a low voltage geofencing so you can only fly in this radius so that was basically close to 20 minutes not really 20 minutes perhaps because we do have time from here until the critical low voltage phase so there you go 
we are in low voltage. Okay, we didn't test out the uh, fail safe return home or anything like that. So let's just go ahead and fly out the remaining power left in the battery here without the prop guards. And without the prop guards, it does fly pretty good. And we are in speed number three. Look at that. And it is coming down a little bit after the turn, so the battery is getting sluggish. So this is the time to land the quadcopter. Because if you continue to fly right now, you're not getting much done anyhow. And you are going to deplete the battery extremely. And that is not healthy for the battery. So you should, and I, sh I do recommend you land the quadcopter and put in the other battery and wait at least about five minutes for the motors to cool down uh, before you insert the new battery and start flying with your second battery. The motors are hot, these are brushed motors. Uh, but this is a test, so I'm going to go ahead and wear down the battery all the way to see what happens when the battery is completely low, all right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go ahead and turn off my DVR. So we have saved it just in case the DVR jams up and I won't be able to save the video. Most of the clock updates do give you a chance to stop the video even after the critical phase and you land. There's still enough battery power and okay, emergency stopped it, but it did flip over sort of. So that's what I was afraid of on these quadcopters with these type of landing legs. So there you go. That is the flight time of the Potenzic P5, the Dreamer Mini. All right, guys, so here we go with the second battery. I just took some photos up in the air right there. So let's go ahead and turn around. And there we go, it's facing us. And let's do the camera tilt. Okay, so it goes all the way down to 90 degrees. There's a little bit of delay though. And it goes up to zero degrees. And we got some prop sh uh, shadow there. So let me turn around, get out of that prop shadow. There we go. All right, so we didn't test out the fail safe return home so I'm gonna go ahead and land it back Oop, I'm facing the opposite way and establish our new home point I just took off from the table so here we go once again landing it and I did put the prop guards back on so I don't have that issue uh, flipping over and then getting dirt in the gears so let's go ahead and arm it take off and it flies pretty good with the prop guards on and lo looks pretty nice too looks like a bigger clock up there all right so let it hover right there and it's not doing any kind of toilet bowl activity yet so let's go ahead and turn off the remote okay turned it off and let's see if anything happens hmm Maybe it's one of those quadcopters that need the Wi-Fi app to be disconnected and then it will do a fail-safe return home. Yeah, I believe that is what it is. Yeah, that is what it is. So it's one of those quadcopters, even though you disconnect with your remote, if your Wi-Fi is stronger than your remote, you will still have connection with your Wi-Fi app so let's see if we can fly this thing i wonder if it has virtual sticks let's see virtual sticks controller it says it's on but where's the virtual sticks you just touch okay and pull there you go i'm flying it with the virtual sticks guys 
doing a little yaw, pitching it forward now, going straight, going to the left, and going to the left, coming towards me. Look, it veers off the same thing like I had experienced with the hard remote. After the left turn, it kind of goes to the left, sort of. Not quite straight, maybe I'm not pointing it straight. Yeah, maybe I'm not pointing it completely straight. But let's pull it back. So here you go. That is the flight using the virtual sticks. And it does fly pretty good. Not bad, not bad at all. Okay, so what can we check out here? We can check out the circle flight. Let's see. Before we do that, let's go into the settings once again. Okay, altitude limit, circling, 10 meters. Let's go 25 meters. I guess you're going to have to reset it. Okay. All right. Okay, circle flight. 25 meters from that point and it's flying away 25 meters and there you go circle flight point of interest even though the horizon is crooked because it has no gimbal and it is a little shaky here and there because there's no electronic image stabilization but Look at that, it's doing a circle me. Now can you, oh no, it just came out of the circle me. So it exits the circle me if I touch the screen or try to the pitch uh, action. So I wanted to see if I can change the radius. So there you go, I did circle me once again and it took off from that position and came over here and it starts to uh, rotate around that position there because that's where it was okay let's see if I do the throttle controller can I throttle up yep I can raise it up in altitude and I can raise it down in altitude while it's doing the circle me and then can I rotate yaw wise nope uh oh uh oh uh oh it's coming down it's coming down and it flipped over. Oh, no. Where's that emergency stop? Okay, so we are out. I don't see any emergency stop button. Okay, let's go and retrieve it. Well, this time I did have the prop guards. So hopefully the props are protected. As well as the motor, motors and the gears, importantly too. Okay, so the circle me does work, but it takes off from where it was. So you need to place the quadcopter where you want the point of interest to be, and then hit the circle me. Okay, so let's hurry on back. All right, back at the table. Okay, so everything is still good. Let me do a calibration real quick. So I'm gonna turn the remote controller back on. Okay, I'm reconnected. And the motors are still good. So I'm gonna recalibrate. There you go. And I'm gonna turn off the remote controller once again. And it's telling you the remote controller is not connected. So we are in the virtual stick mode. So that's great. So how do I take off? One key to take off. And there is a slider. There you go. One key to take off works from the app as well. Let me get some altitude. I wonder why it came down in altitude while it was doing the circle me. Yeah. All right. Hopefully that doesn't occur again. Now let's see. Let's do a follow me here. Now I do have service from a hotspot from my phone, but it is just going somewhere. Oh no, let's exit. Confirm. Holy cow, 
almost had a flyaway there. Yeah, I guess that didn't work for me. So going forward, turning and coming towards me. Okay, so we won't do the follow me because it's doing something else. And letting go. Now let's do the waypoints here. All right. So it knows where we are. I'm getting some kind of a map, but it's not here. Oh, it's... It thinks I'm way over there. I'm over here. No, it does think that I'm over here. Yep, and that's my spot right here. So let's go ahead and zoom in on a little bit. And let's see here. Okay. Plot about five points and let's go and hit go. Confirm flight. Confirm. There you go. The waypoints flight. Going towards number one. And autonomously going towards number two. Yep. No, no, no. It's not it's not happening. It's kind of wandering off over there by itself. It's still on number one. And it's rising up in altitude. Oh, it says it's returning low voltage. Okay, so it wanted to work, but it doesn't work <laughs> because of low voltage. Okay, so let me get out. Confirm. All right, got out of waypoints. And let me go ahead and trash everything here. All right. And it is not coming down, it is just stationary above the home point. So you are able to still take control and fly with the phone app as well. Yeah, that's pretty good. Not bad. Okay, so two batteries wasted. And that doesn't seem like it was 20 minutes to me on that second battery. It seemed like it was a lot less than 20 minutes or I would have finished off that trajectory flight. Okay, I'm still flying. There's a geofencing. So there you go. We are limited to the radius of the geofencing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it in for a landing and call it a day. So there you go, guys. The review and flight of the Potensic P5 Dreamer Mini Drone. I'm going to go ahead and hit that land. One key to land, but it says return to home guide, it says. Okay, I'm pressing the wrong button over here. So let me go ahead and hit that return home. I mean, uh, one key to land. And there you go. And I can redirect its path. slowly comes down and I do have fine controls over it there you go sticks that landing nice all right guys so here we go I charged up the first battery so let's go ahead and continue here waypoints flight okay it still knows that I'm right here so let's go ahead and plot some points here Okay, five points plotted, press go, slide to confirm. Even though I didn't charge up the batteries completely, we should have enough battery power for this feature to work. So hopefully it works and it doesn't just come home. It's not doing it correctly. Yes, it is. It's going to point number two and 
slows down, turns, goes to point number three. Nice. So the waypoints work. The follow me does not work. Perhaps now that it knows I'm right here, will try to follow me after we get done with the waypoints over here. So going to point number four now. Where is it going? It's lost a little bit, as you can see. It doesn't know where it is exactly now. Looks like it's headed towards point number five. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Okay, so let's exit. Confirm. And let's trash this. So we are done. Okay, so we are right there. Let me go ahead and bring it in. Oop, it's going away from me. So let's go ahead and bring it in. I do have service on my iPad from my phone via Bluetooth and I am connected with the uh, quadcopter's Wi-Fi. So that's how I'm getting the map and all that. So let's see, follow me. Yeah, it's going somewhere else again hey hey confirm hello okay hopefully it stops holy cow <laughs> okay so that doesn't work all right return to home slide <laughs> okay it's rising up in altitude and it's going to come home there you go guys <laughs> i think that'll conclude my test and review of the potenzic p5 the dreamer mini drone so if you want to check it out for yourself yeah uh, the link is provided for you down below or any information thereof anyways so thank you so much for tuning in and watching have a great day and we'll see you again next time i'm going to exit and retake control all right there we go hey retaking control with the hard remote let's see how far it goes yep i don't have any video oh i got it back it's going 100 meters almost there we go, 122, 130, 150, there we go, 150, video going in and out, it's still flying, and I can still see it going, still going, Still going. Hopefully it has enough battery to come back. I think the distance is limited. Yep. Maximum limit distance. Yep. It says it's about to reach maximum distance. And I'm still pushing it. I don't know what it is doing. It's still flying, it says. So it has reached its maximum distance. I still got video. Nice. Returning to home. So it looks like 300 meters. Okay. Okay, returning. All right. Okay, there we go. I see it rising up in altitude a little bit. I lost video. Hopefully the DVR is recording real-time video. And it is coming back home.
and we still got white bars but I have lost communication with it so it's coming back that's all that matters when will we, oh we got video back and I still got a couple of bars remaining on the battery life indicator so we're still good it will come home all right There we go. And I have retaken control of it. Nice. One kid land. Beautiful.